Now, dear friends, in that portion of scripture which we read this morning, in Second Kings and the fourth chapter, Second Kings and the fourth chapter. The first verse, Now there cried a certain woman who was a widow, you see, of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elijah, her husband having died. Thou knowest that your servant, my husband, did fear the Lord, and the creditor is come to take unto him my two sons to be slaves. Elijah said to her, What shall I do for you? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? I have only a pot of oil. So, the prophet said to her, Go collect all the vessels that you can, utensils, vessels that you can possibly collect. And after she had collected them, the prophet said, Hey, now all these vessels are around, are filling my house. What shall I do? Pour that oil. You mean a few drops here, a few drops in the other? And the oil multiplied. You know, the oil stands for the Holy Spirit. She held on to her faith. She held on to that indwelling Spirit of God. See, we must not sigh against God. We must not say anything that reflects negatively. Even in the midst of our hardest trial, we should not say anything. God is good. That's it. We get into a difficult situations by our own wrongdoing. Most often, they are self-inflicted. God has a way of delivering us. Now, that be filled with the Spirit is something which people don't quite stop and possess. But God says, don't be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. You know, I met a man who said he could consume, he would sit down and consume 20 in those, in those places. They drink out of huge jars more like a pot. And he said, 23 pots. And as he sat in the meeting, this man of great violence, who would beat up his wife for coming to the meeting and hearing God's word, he was transformed and he became one of our preachers. So, my dear friends, that pot of oil 
instead of the pot of beer, the pot of liquor. Don't be drunk with wine, but rather be filled with the Spirit. Filled with the Spirit. You know, people have just said, okay, this particular gift signifies that I am filled with the Spirit. No. There are many gifts. There are many tokens which God gives. But the test of it is holy living. Holy living. When you have, you're filled with God's Holy Spirit, then your life is filled with God's holiness. Holiness unto the Lord. You know, your tongue is sanctified. No more lies. You don't want to speak evil. You know, when you sit down with some people, they just spew out evil. Talk about somebody. Why talk about others? Why can't I talk about what God has been telling me that morning? We don't talk about that. We talk about somebody else. How is that going to help us? No, it's not going to help us at all. Speak not evil one of an e and one of another, brethren, says God's word. Negative mind, speaking evil, thinking evil, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are of good report, think on these things. Being filled with the Holy Spirit is that. To the pure, all things are pure. You know, I asked somebody, now, if your car park of your church gets filled with some of the biggest cars, the most expensive cars, and your neighbors drive in on those gleaming, expensive cars, do you f shout hallelujah? <laughs> and generally, they would smirk or laugh and say, no. <laughs> we would remark, oh, he has bought a new car. Oh, that's an expensive car. You know how it is. It was not a hallelujah that came out of their hearts. My friend has a lovely new car. Hallelujah. When you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you rejoice. You don't look glum and you don't look at your neighbor. See, look, he's gotten rich. There's been a landfall of money, probably. Well, look at all that rubbish, and you are said to be filled with the Spirit. But you're filled with the devil's Spirit. When your reactions are like that. My dear friends, so what did the Prophets say, shut the door, shut the door. No, today it's almost impossible to shut the door. Why? You know, there are the beepers, there are the 
cell phones, there are the all kinds of gadgets, beeping, squeaking, <laughs> squealing, all over the place. And soon you might have even uh, some kind of loud horns going off if you say, I'm deaf or I'm hard of hearing. You know, it's almost impossible to, for us to shut the door. Now, my dear friends, how would you like it? You're having an audience with the Queen of England, and beep, 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 beep. Your cell phone goes off. <laughs> You'll be taken for a madman. And you'll be <laughs> quickly dragged out of the place. But we are in such a strait today. We can't be still. It's shocking. I always thought it was very poor manners to call anybody after 9.30, 10. You know, though my calls are, are looked forward to, because rarely do I bother people with calls, and they know that if I call, there is something very important to pass on, and it's going to be a brief call. However, well, I always thought it was bad manners, ill-mannered. But nowadays, it looks as though people don't bother. They will call at all odd hours to communicate rubbish. Nothing of moment. Shut the door, said the prophet. Jesus said the same. Jesus said, when thou prayest, go into your closet. Matthew 6, 6. Shut the door and speak to your father in secret. Don't keep one ear cocked for the beep peeps. What is God saying to me? We are losing out. You know, we are losing out to all kinds of cheap gadgets. You know? Why should a man lose his sleep over a game? And sometimes I wonder, how do these people perform at work the next day? They are here at the game, shouting themselves a horse, you know? Emptying the beers, beer bottles. And how can these fellows perform next day? What kind of work will they turn out? The work ethic is gone. The discipline is gone. We don't even know how out of politeness to God to shut the door and say, I am going to be still. God is speaking to me. I will respect my God. You know, God has become a very cheap person today in our families. 
No reverence, no respect, whatever. We children in, the, in our home, we could not and would not disturb mother while she was praying. Mother was a very caring person, never neglected her family, did everything for us, but when she went alone for prayer, we reverenced that hour or two when Mother was with God. You know, these, are, these were very normal things to us. My dear friends, shut the door. And God filled those vessels. Now sell these oil and let your sons be free from the bondman. When I have found people in great trouble, deep debt, and so on, and I could see no way by which they could deliver themselves, I said, Lord, help me to help these people. Their whole family will suffer if the, this situation persists. And the Lord would help me to release them from their creditors. Friends, we have a God that does not want us to be in bondage. Last of all, let us turn to Romans, Romans 8, 12 and 13. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. You know, here he has been speaking about the spirit which quickened Jesus from the dead. If ye dwell in your mortal bodies, then you too will be given that risen life. So, here, the Word of God tells us that we are not debtors to all every whim and fancy that comes to us. Hey, I'd like to do this, I fancy. What do you fancy? One of the common questions today is what would you fancy? What food? Thai food, or Malaysian food, or Chinese, or what? What is your preference? All right, some people do have their preferences, and play, let them please themselves. But, must a man or a woman feel obligated to answer every call of the flesh? That way you will be destroyed. The flesh begins to lust after many things. It lusts after somebody else's wife, or it lusts after some neighborhood person. I once told a girl in Indiana, hey, was there any reason for this neighbor man to be writing these letters to you? Did you provoke him by uh, the way you dressed? You know, the skimpy, stuff that people wear these days. Did you provoke him? He's a man of six or seven children.
If so, you must repent. You have no proper business provoking that man to uncleanness and lust. You know, nobody seems to think of that. The provocative way of handling your body. We are not debtors to the flesh to live after the flesh. Thirteenth verse, For if we live after the flesh, you shall die. You will die. But if you through the Spirit mortify, that's kill, the deeds of the body, you shall live. Simple, plain, plain truth. If by the Spirit you kill the deeds of the body, you will live. You will be free. Otherwise, you will be in bondage. Are we debtors to the flesh? No. I am a debtor to Jesus Christ. I owe everything to Him. My every breath, of course, I owe to Him. And I am going to live seeking to pay back at least a little part of my enormous debt. Let us pray. O oh, loving Father, we humble ourselves before you. How we almost seem to be debtors, slaves. In a manner which cripples us, fills us with fear. Although around us we see America being sold down the river. And finding itself in trillions of debt. About which the leaders of the nation appear not to care very much. But Lord, we know that when we become captives to the flesh, our liberties are taken away. Our freedoms destroyed. So what is happening in a wider world is just a reflection of what has happened in the heart. The heart of the nation. O oh Lord our God, you want us to be free by your Spirit. Free from the works of the flesh the emotions that drag us down, the fears that which tear us apart. By your Spirit, you want us to be free. So help us, we pray.
in Jesus' holy name. Amen.